Hi folks, we're now going to talk about which plugins in my opinion in the year 2017 and likely into the year 2018 and 19 are the best plugins that you can find and utilize on your WordPress website. So without further ado, the first plugin I'm going to start with is actually a premium plugin. And when I say premium plugin, I'm talking specifically about a plugin that is paid versus something you can find within the free uh, you know, WordPress um, directory. And the first one I want to talk about is this premium plugin by WPMU Dev. It is a pure subscription-based offering, and it's on the pricier side of plugins. It's $99 a month for a WPMU Dev subscription, but to be honest with you, we run a digital agency, and for us, the $99 a month is well worth it based on a number of plugins that we use through this provider. Uh, the first plugin within this WPMU Dev uh, that I would recommend having is this WPMU Dev Dashboard. This allows you to quickly update any plugins that you do have installed through this uh, assortment of plugins or offerings that WPMU Dev provides. So what I'm going to do is just go through this list of all of the plugins within WPMU Dev specifically and tell you which ones I would recommend having on your website. The first one I would recommend having is this plugin called WP Smush Pro and not Hummingbird if I'm going through this list in order. And the reason being is there's another plugin that we've tested that we actually think performs a bit better than, than Hummingbird from a uh, website optimization standpoint. So WPMU Smush is a must have plugin in my opinion for every website that you create on WordPress. Uh, what it does in a nutshell is uh, compress all of your images uh, on an, a per upload basis, but you can also do something like a bulk quote unquote smush, which compresses all of your, your existing images on your website. And it's a really kind of set it and forget it type of method that you can utilize on every website that you build that allows you to compress all of your images and uh, reduce load time of your website and ideally increase your SEO rankings because your website's loading faster and just increase the uh, stickiness of your website because your users are experiencing a website that loads a lot faster. Images usually are the biggest component and the biggest draw when it comes to uh, load times. So I definitely recommend using that plugin there. Scrolling down here, we have some other really amazing plugins like this Course Press Pro plugin is a plugin that allows you to quickly and easily turn your WordPress website into a course. Um, so you can offer you know, a course that gives people 10 videos that walks them through each video at the end of it. Uh, you get a certificate saying you've completed the course so on and so forth. So there's just some really nice um, plug and play opportunities there if you're looking to uh, do something along those lines. Google Analytics Plus is a great plugin to uh, have all of your Google Analytics quickly be displayed on your WordPress dashboard. Same thing with Ultimate Branding. If you really want a uh, quick and easy way to add your logo wherever you see the WordPress logo currently and instead have your logo show, definitely recommend using this plugin here. Membership Pro 2 is an amazing plugin if you're looking to create any sort of membership areas on your website. They offer a really, really great option in this Membership 2 Pro plugin, and there's so many options, so many different uh, pieces of functionality that you can take advantage of. Pro Sites, if you're looking to create a Edu Blogs type of um, network where you can use WordPress multi-site and create a network of sites underneath your main parent site uh, and offer those at a, you know, a cost to other people, then Pro Sites is essential to do that. So again, just a really, really important plugin if you're looking to go down that road. If you're not, it might not be very applicable at all. Custom Sidebars. Pro is something that comes in handy if you're building a custom theme from scratch and you want the ability to uh, give your clients a lot of uh, more control, a lot more control over the sidebars throughout the website. MarketPress um, definitely would recommend WooCommerce over MarketPress. WooCommerce is the automatic owned uh, e-commerce engine and it's one of the most popular e-commerce frameworks that you can plug and play right into your WordPress website. So I would stay away from that to be honest. Scrolling down here. Cloner is really great if you're on a multi-site network once more to quickly clone one subsite to another subsite and have all of that data be carried over. That is super, super great. Uh, this in the same light, this multi-site content copier, uh, definitely very, very important. The slide in app is really nice if you're looking to give somebody a you know upsell type of pop-up or slide in uh, when they're on a certain page, etc. Fundraising, pretty self-explanatory, but uh, has a lot of functionality built in. If you want to add a fundraising component to your website, definitely highly recommend this plugin here. 
Domain mapping is really, really essential, again, for multi-sites. Um, it makes it super easy to have your .com domain redirected to one of your subsites. So instead of it being example.example.com, you can quickly just make it, you know, mynewsite.com and have that example.example.com direct to mynewwebsite.com instead. MailChimp integration is always nice to have if you're using MailChimp. Pay with a like is a great option that we've used in the past, and it's a way for you to uh, give somebody free content uh, as long as they like something within your website or within your blog. So definitely something that is really nice to have. And as you can see, as I continue to scroll through, there's a ton of plugin options. The further I scroll down, the less kind of, you know, excited I am about any of these, to be honest. It looks like they kept their bread and butter more closely to the top. So, yeah, there's nothing throughout that list that really just jumped out at me. But everything that I covered previously, um, those are all cases for the $99 a month subscription through WPMU Dev. If WPMU Dev at $99 just doesn't make sense for you, then uh, feel free to just avoid all of those offerings altogether. In a lot of cases, everything that I mentioned uh, within these plugins within WPMU Dev is offered through other providers, but some options like Membership 2 and Pro Sites, if you're looking for that functionality, uh, it might be at least uh, worth it to subscribe for a month just to be able to utilize these uh, plugins on your website. But just know that after the month is over, if you want to try to upgrade your plugins, you won't be able to unless you renew your subscription. So WPMU Dev is really a big uh, catalyst to a lot of the WordPress success that we have with most, most of the websites that we build. The next plugin that is pretty pivotal to every website that we work on is the advanced, if I can type it correctly, custom fields plugin. And this is uh, developed by somebody, I think by the name of Elliot, I forget his last name, but super active has been managing Elliot Condon has been managing this plugin for many, many years, puts great uh, delicate care into everything that uh, he releases or his team releases. Uh, but in a nutshell, Advanced Custom Fields allows you to really extend WordPress into this full-fledged uh, you know, page builder in some cases, but just allows you to quickly uh, amend WordPress with some additional fields uh, at the post level so that you can have some advanced functionality added uh, to your posts or to your pages. And they have some really, really great documentation here. Highly recommend taking a look at advanced custom fields. And when you run into a situation where you're on a specific type of custom post type and maybe have some specific requirements, like uh, let's say you're, you're building a uh, floor plans custom post type, and your floor plans need some custom fields that allow the client to enter, you know, the square footage, etc. The best way, in my opinion, to add those extra fields for the client to be able to update those values within WordPress is through using something like advanced custom fields. So great plugin. Definitely highly recommend giving that a look if you haven't already. Akismet is pretty straightforward. Um, and if you're any, you know, uh, familiar with WordPress in any manner, then you likely have heard of Akismet. Um, right now, in order to use Akismet, um, which is a just an extra layer of spam protection, so anybody leaving comments on your, your blog or maybe even through your, your forms, uh, Akismet is the first layer of defense that we usually install on every website um, to just help reduce um, any comment spam or any form spam uh, through that website. Currently, you have to create a WordPress.com account to use Akismet, but I recommend doing so even if you're not using Akismet. Create a WordPress.com account because of a plugin we're going to talk about shortly, but that is Akismet, pretty straightforward. The next plugin I wanna talk about is the AMP by Automatic plugin. And this plugin specifically isn't getting the greatest reviews to be honest right now, not quite sure why. We've had good success with it, and again, it's another one of those plug and play options um, that you can just quickly add to your website. AMP stands for Accelerated Mobile Pages, and Google search engines in general, uh, for that matter, are putting more emphasis on the load times for your mobile 
rendered websites. So whereas, you know, a few years ago, responsive websites were all the rage, you had to have a website that looks great on your desktop view, but also on your tablet and then your mobile device. By having that uh, website be responsive, Google, you know, gave you extra credit when it came to SEO. And in general, your users thanked you because they had a better user experience when navigating that mobile uh, website. Now what Google is and other search engines, again, for that matter, but we all know that Google's really the, uh, the you know, the head um, and the, the pioneer when it comes to all these types of things and the, the search engine that we should probably focus on the most. Um, they are looking for even more advancements in the mobile area. And one of those things that they're pushing really heavily into are accelerated mobile pages, which allow for you to present to the search engines a very much more condensed down uh, rendering of your mobile site. So a lot of the extra, you know, JavaScript, a lot of the extra images, uh, the plugins, functionality, a lot of that is kind of taken away when you install this AMP plugin. And then you, you're left with something that's a little bit more clean, a little bit more straightforward. You might lose a little bit of your design that you've put into your, your mobile site, but in that losing of that, you're probably going to gain a lot more eyeballs, a lot more attention, and improve your search engine rankings by installing AMP. This plugin specifically allows you to dictate the color um, that you want to be displayed. In other words, in sections like this, you might want this to be a different shade of blue or red or something along those lines. This AMP plugin will allow you to quickly provide all of your posts or your pages if you, if you so choose to Google or search engines um, and allow them to pick up that accelerated content. And by doing so, again, you're going to likely rank higher than your competitors uh, for similar key phrases or similar content because you are now utilizing these, these uh, acceler accelerated uh, yeah, mobile pages. So in any case, moving on, AMP, definitely highly, highly recommend installing that. The next plugin that I highly recommend is this plugin called Segment. Um, and I believe it's currently called Segment uh, for analytics within the WordPress ecosystem, but Segment as a whole is a way for your team or you in general to quickly enable additional third-party integrations without having to do it more manually at like at the PHP level where you're dropping in a snippet of JavaScript. Instead, through Segment uh, and the WordPress plugin, you can just install the WordPress Segment integration plugin and then create a Segment account. You want to, let's say, integrate Google Analytics, you want to integrate MailChimp, you can then do so really quickly through the Segment interface and by having this Segment plugin, uh, instantly add that additional functionality to your website. So let's do a quick Google search for Segment for WordPress and likely the first option that you're going to see is going to be the segment. I believe it's, yeah, Analytics for WordPress by Segment is the name of it. A little vague, but um, by installing this, you have now integrated segments into your website, getting a pretty good rating as of right now. Download, install this, create your segment account, um, add your API key from segment to uh, the WordPress area, and you have now added um, this unlimited potential of integrations to your website. All of those third-party integrations, whether it's HubSpot, whether it's analytics, whether it's ad roll, uh, you have the ability now to integrate those really easily into your, your WordPress website. One of the main reasons we like to use it at our digital agency is because we don't want to bog down our development team with, you know, having to add these uh, little JavaScripts every time an integration is deemed necessary. Now our marketing team can just jump in to WordPress or segments and quickly add that integration. So definitely highly recommended plug in there. Under that, we have Broken Link Checker. Pretty straightforward. Uh, the Broken Link Checker plugin uh, does just that. It checks on a regular basis, regular basis to make sure that um, any links that are used or kind of you know added to your website right now, it checks to make sure that those aren't broken, that every link is going to a proper location, as opposed to getting like a 404 uh, broken page type of message. So pretty straightforward. Definitely uh, would recommend it. A nice feature is that if it ever does detect a broken link you will simply get an email address at the default email uh, address specified in WordPress, indicating the page that the broken link was on, etc. Gravity Forms is a premium plugin. Uh, it's about, I think, $50 a year to renew, $99, I think, at first. Actually, it looks like it's only $39 now, so they've reduced the price quite a bit. And in my opinion, it's one of the most essential plugins that any website we build usually utilizes. Uh, and it's, in my opinion, so much better than utilizing something like Gravity, or I should say Contact Form 7, which you'll see very popular, uh, pop, 
uh, very popular within the theme development community. Um, and I think that's mainly because it's free. But Gravity Forms is uh, a premium plugin worth every penny, in my opinion, that gives you a form builder type of layout like this where you can use their uh, available form fields over here on the right hand side and quickly add these fields to your Gravity Form. Uh, and just in general, Gravity Forms has a ton of options. Uh, highly recommend utilizing them, reading more about it. In my opinion, by far, it's better than, uh, I think there's another one called uh, WP Ninja Forms or something along those lines. There's Contact Form 7. But based on my experience, Gravity Forms is still by far the best form building plugin on your website or that you can use on, on your website. The next option that we have here is Discuss. And now as of 2017, um, they've kind of shifted their business model a little bit, which makes me almost not want to recommend them, where now within every Discuss commenting feed, they are going to be showing ads for their free service. If you pay for their premium service, you cannot have, or you can have it so it doesn't display those advertisements. But um, I don't know, for, for me, for right now, I'm still leaning towards using Discuss as my commenting system as opposed to the default WordPress commenting system. It provides just a really, really nice interface that looks a lot more user-friendly. I'm gonna to jump to the blog to show you an example because I would assume that they're using it on their own blog here. If I scroll down, you can see this interface that they're showing here where I have my name listed over here. On the left-hand side, we have all of the comments. If I wanted to leave a new comment, I easily could do so by scrolling down and looking for the add comment section, which I can't honestly find right now. Well, subscribe, not sure why, maybe commenting is closed, but it formats all of your comments in this really nice layout where you have your avatar, anything that's a reply is nested nicely with uh, that person's avatar showing, formatted of content or for, uh, formatting of content is done really nicely. And uh, overall, it's just a really nice plug and play option that looks a lot better than the standard WordPress commenting system. So um, highly recommend it if uh, you're okay with showing some ads. If not, you might wanna pay for the premium service if that's an option. If that isn't, then I would do a traditional, you know, discuss versus uh, type of Google search. Let's try that again. Where you can find some competitors. Discuss versus WordPress, Facebook comments is another option. Discourse, apparently live fire is another option. Um, so yeah, I'll leave it at that for now. I currently am still recommending that. Duplicate posts. This is a great plugin and it's pretty simplistic and straightforward in what it does. It's got a 4.9 rating currently within the repository of WordPress or the, I should say, plugin directory of WordPress. And it's a plug and play option that lets you within WordPress have some options to clone an existing page or post. If I jump to pages, you can see I don't have that option right here. If I jump to plugins, let's just say duplicate post. You can see I've already searched for that quite a bit. Searching in the wrong place, add new. It's one thing I don't like about that WordPress search area is that I, I'm always confused and I think that I should be searching within that first search bar, but that's not really the case. I first have to click the add new plugin. In any case, install plugins, Duplicate post, if I activate this, what you're now going to see is if I hover over any post, I have this clone option where I can quickly clone a post and it's just a really nice time saver. Uh, within the settings of duplicate post, just make sure that if you jump to permissions, if you have any custom post types, like let's say you had a, again, maybe a um, floor plans, custom post type, just make sure you enable it here so that um, the duplicate post option shows up for you there as well. Pretty straightforward. Next, we have Instant Article for WP. Instant Article for WP is in a similar fashion to the AMP option here. It's just an extended way to make sure that, let's just do a quick Google search for this article. Article for WP. It's a quick way to ensure that any Facebook um, integration that you might want on your WordPress website is really easy to integrate and format it specifically for Word, or I should say for Facebook. Not getting the greatest reviews here. Again, not really sure why I haven't had any real problems with it. I think it does what I need it to do pretty quickly, um, but uh, maybe there's a better option out there currently. For now, this is what we're using and recommending. Instant articles for WP. Uh, you can read more about it here, but in general, it just allows for that um, sync between your, your WordPress posts and Facebook um, and all the, the content within your uh, WordPress posts and pages to be formatted 
and you know transferable and shareable on uh, Facebook in a much more Facebook friendly type of manner. So recommending that for now. The next option that we have here is Jetpack. And now in the past, Jetpack was something that um, I didn't really concern myself too much with, but over the last few years, it really has grown into um, any essential must-have plugin for WordPress where you can have data from SEO, you can have additional options from a security standpoint, backup standpoint, um, you can have uh, elegant, fast, and rich content added quickly to your website, which is really, really great for SEO. Now, always working for you, 29 million people utilizing it and whatever. Uh, let's see some additional features here. Uh, professional themes, faster load times, image tools, richer content, uh, grow your site. So site stats, search engines like it, social sharing is really easy. This is one of my favorite aspects of Jetpack, the social sharing option where you can set it so that every time you post a new blog post, it automatically gets shared to your Twitter account or to your Facebook account. And in my opinion, if you're a small team, you're trying to do a lot from your outreach standpoint on social media, but you want to kind of keep things centralized and only have to do it once in WordPress, this is a really great option to quickly do that. So for maybe this reason alone, install Jetpack. Keep it safe, prevent attacks. So brute force attacks are usually when people are trying to just, you know, run a bot that's attacking your login page with a, you know, admin user and then as a password that's, you know, uh, pulled from a password directory. And they, you know, over the course of 10,000 attempts, eventually, uh, through brute force, break into your website. Uh, case in point, use a very strong password. Uh, case in second point, use Jetpack to prevent these types of attacks. Uh, protect your data. Uh, they have some backup options, I think most of which are a paid option, but always a good idea to have backups if possible. Um, automatic malware scanning, which is always a good idea. And then expert support. Stay in touch, free email, subscription service, write faster. Uh, with Markdown, which is just an HTML alternative, not really my uh, cup of tea. Engage readers, advanced comments, and contact forms. So right here actually is a option um, that opposes the discuss option, where you could potentially just use the uh, Jetpack advanced comments functionality. Uh, haven't played around with this too much, to be honest with you, but give that a shot as well if you're not looking to use discuss. Filter spam, uh, so beyond a kismet, there's some additional spam protection options here. Uh, and for those reasons alone, I would recommend utilizing uh, Jetpack. Along with that side note, uh, Jetpack allows you to use the WordPress.com um, standalone um, application on your desktop. I don't currently use it, but it looks really enticing. It's all built on, I believe, a React framework. It's super fast um, and allows you to manage all of your WordPress websites from a desktop admin panel. Um, but you have to have Jetpack installed in order to use it. So again, another really good reason to have Jetpack installed. It's probably super uh, feature forward to have it installed on every website you create, whether or not you're utilizing a ton of its features as of right now. SendGrid, I did talk about this in a previous video. We currently use DigitalOcean or uh, Amazon Web Services for pretty much every uh, WordPress website that we host. And instead of setting up mail servers, we, we really like to offload that onto something like SendGrid, uh, where you can just, by installing a SendGrid WordPress plugin, have SendGrid managing all of your transactional emails. And one example of that would be um, the forgot my password uh, option when you go to log in. That email that gets sent to you uh, with that password reset link, that's considered a transactional email. And if you don't have a mail server set up, then you are not going to ever receive that email. So uh, I would recommend using SendGrid currently. Uh, the last time I looked, there wasn't a free plan anymore. There's a try free option but you can send around 40,000 emails per month. If you're setting up multiple WordPress websites, in my opinion, $10 per month is worth it. Uh, I would just offload the cost to the client uh, on a per website basis. And, and just like that, you're now you know, um, making a profit on utilizing something like SendGrid. So if you plan on having five or more websites, just charge you know, $10 per website for a mail server when really you probably only need uh, to set this up for, um, you know, one time and then you're making an extra ten dollars per month uh, off of each uh, website that you host uh, pro tip there there is a good amount of revenue to be made uh, in hosting and uh, providing uh, mail server type of services like this as well really great option here it's going to ensure uh, a really great success rate uh, for all of those transactional emails it's going to make sure that your transactional emails aren't going to people spam 
So in my opinion, it's worth every penny. It's what we currently use. Uh, I haven't found another option that really beats its uh, plug and play and it just works type of um, offering. So highly recommended there. This plugin, this SendGrid plugin is an, an official plugin from SendGrid. It's got a great rating, download it, install it, set up a SendGrid account, charge your client $10 per month. After you've you know landed your second hosted, a client you're now making $10 per month on each additional um, client that you, you host. So it kind of pays for itself. Moving on here, our next plugin is the Simple 301 Redirects. And honestly, I don't know how many times we've acquired a client when they were with a previous vendor who didn't set up 301 redirects. They had a Word, WordPress, maybe even WooCommerce website. They had a ton of traffic going to the website. They rebuilt the website. They had a ton of blog posts and the company that they uh, used previously uh, didn't set up 301 redirects. So that company maybe made some updates to the permalinks or just did a complete you know, rebuild on WordPress from an old framework and didn't, and didn't update the 301 redirects. So super important to make sure that you do so from an SEO standpoint. One example would be if you're at testing.com and your previous URL was files, not fikes, uh, forward slash my downloads uh, dot PDF, whatever the case is. If you're getting a lot of traffic to this file and all of a sudden you go to your WordPress website and your directory became this instead, Google and other search engines aren't going to know that this is the same file and has a new uh, location. So with simple 301 redirects, you have the ability to uh, do just that. They don't have any screenshots apparently, but you have within simple 301 redirects a field. Let's just install it really quick. Plugins, add new this time, search plugins. You have a field that asks you for the previous URL and then a field that asks you to enter uh, the new URL. And just like that, it's pretty straightforward. You now have the ability to set up that 301 redirect so that when Google comes to your website, it knows, oh, okay, I don't go here to this URL anymore. Instead, I go to this new URL over here. And now um, all of that, what they call link juice within the SEO world, is carried over to uh, the proper new location and ideally any SEO rankings that you had for those pages or that content isn't lost because you set up these 301 redirects. So again, just a really quick way to set those up. Um, some people might disagree. You might want to do that at the actual server, server level. Um, but if you only have maybe a small handful of pages, you don't want to get involved in the server side of things, um, adding all of these entries manually to the server block or whatever the case may be, if you're on Apache, um, then this is probably the best way to do it. So highly recommend that. Migrate DB Pro, WP Migrate DB Pro technically, which is by far one of the worst names DB Pro for plugins uh, I've ever seen. But in any case, it is a very, very essential plugin uh, when you do a lot of proper deployment runway, which I'm going to cover in, in a different video, but um, you might have a local development website that you're working on and then you're you know ideally not FTPing ideally you're doing some sort of version control and then you're using you know some sort of deploy commands where you're deploying your website to your staging or production in other words your staging or live uh, server um, when you're doing so you want to make sure that you're migrating the database as well there's a number of ways to do this in my opinion by far the best way to do it is through utilizing Migrate DB Pro, which is just a plugin that gives you the ability to sync almost, I can't say sync because sync is uh, just not something that actually happens in the in the database side of um, you know web development currently, maybe someday. But in the case, it allows you to push or pull, probably more technically uh, is the right way to, to put it, um, your database content to or from your dev staging or production environments. So once you're done with your local development environment, ideally you're just pushing your database to the production environment. And all you need to do is have Migrate DB Pro installed on each of those uh, WordPress installs. And then you can have your database either pushed or pulled from each location. And it takes a lot of the pain out of the whole database side of things, which is usually pretty painful. So highly recommend that. I mentioned earlier that I don't recommend using that um, that Hummingbird plugin that you saw through WP um, MU Dev. The reason why is because we find that this uh, WP Rocket, I believe .me, um, nope, let's not load that because who knows what's going to come up. WP Rocket, I thought it was, maybe there's a hyphen in there. 
Yeah. WP-Rocket.me is a, a WordPress optimization plugin that I really love. It allows you to install Varnish. It does a ton of minification to all of your static assets. Um, so that includes things like your CSS, your JavaScript, and your images. It minifies a lot of that so that it, uh, it removes a lot of the unnecessary you know, spacing, ind uh, indentation, etc., within all of your files. So that when your uh, your browser or the client using their browser loads your website, it's getting um, the the smallest file possible. Um, also, what it's going to do in a lot of cases is try to load all of those JavaScript files from a central location, so it's not making multiple requests to the server. Instead, it just makes one large request. So, uh, highly recommend using uh, WP Rocket. It is again another premium plugin here, thirty nine dollars. Uh, per site, so it's it's a bit pricier there. And uh, if you uh, are really looking to optimize your website, I I would recommend use, using this. And uh, again, offloading potentially the cost to the client. Um, so you charge them for hosting, charge them for the mail server, and charge them for some plugins along these lines. Um, side note: If it's an e-commerce website, I definitely highly recommend that you go the route of charging the client for the five site license. And then that way, every time you have an e-commerce client, you have the ability to make a profit on managing the licenses for them um, through commerce, purchase it for, let's say it's a $200 um, plugin through commerce for per five sites. I would say just go with that and then charge the clients, um, each client that you have uh, for the single site license. And then by the time you have five clients, you're actually ending up making you know a few hundred dollars a year um, by just renewing the licenses at, the, at the, the five license level as opposed to the single site uh, license level. So kind of another pro tip from a monetization um, standpoint. And it applies here again, uh, if you're going to be using this on every website, us at our digital agency, we utilize the unlimited sites option here for $200 uh, per year. We have unlimited site licenses, and then we just offload per site costs to the client. Uh, and eventually we get to the point where we're, we're actually making a profit on utilizing a plugin that's benefiting everybody and the client. Again, you're not overcharging them because you're, you're just charging them for what it would cost at the single site license. So it's a win-win for everybody, and it's a, it's a way for you uh, as the developer to make a profit to um, to have a monetary reason to continue to support um, you know the updates etc for these types of plugins so a um, little bit of a tangent there but again uh, definitely highly recommend WP rocket we did an a B comparison WP rocket outperformed um, hummingbird out of the box just checking all the the settings that are available to us without breaking the website um, which is an option so make sure that whenever you're adding these um, settings within uh, either of those plugins um, just be aware that you could definitely potentially break your website by trying to do too much. Either case, by setting all of the default options in both plugins out of the box, WP Rocket outperformed uh, Hummingbird, Hummingbird uh, pretty well. So uh, that would be my recommendation in that sense. Visual Composer is something that I fought against for quite some time, to be honest with you. Most premium themes out there that you can find in places like Theme Forest, they're going to have a page builder. And page builders let you build really nice responsive content within the WordPress ecosystem by using uh, a customized editor. So instead of seeing the default WordPress editor, you're going to see something that looks a lot more like what you're seeing right here with a number of different options as far as, you know, how many columns do you want? What type of widget do you want to show? And I'm really starting to gravitate towards just using this on every single website that we build. One of the main reasons why is not just because it's it's super easy to use, it's super powerful, the clients are, are able to easily use it, but uh, a large reason why I'd recommend just going this route is because almost every premium, premium theme out there nowadays is utilizing it, which means that if you're building custom sites from scratch um, and then you're diving into like acquiring a website from a client that is using Visual Composer, your development team might feel a little out of the element, out of their element, but if everybody's using this all the time, uh, it just kind of makes a homogenation of everything a little bit um, more across, you know, every website that you build. And again, it's, it's honestly, it's, it's really, it's really good. In my opinion, I think it's, it's what WordPress uh, should be doing and eventually probably will be doing more of uh, just to make sure that they're competing a little bit more at like the page builder level. There's not really a super amazing, you know, front end, back end uh, option within WordPress to uh, create super easy, easy and, and uh, customizable columns and, and content. I do want to note that there is a free option called page origin, 
page builder. Uh, and we utilized this for a little while, but overall, again, it was just, you know, our developers working in this ecosystem. And then we'd acquire a website that was using a premium theme that was using uh, Visual Composer here. And it was just kind of unnecessary. But this is a free option, uh, kind of unnecessary and kind of confusing. Um, and I like to try to keep things as, as I said, homogenized as possible. So we played around with this for a little bit. Great option, but uh, in my opinion, just because everybody else is doing it, it, it really is probably best just to, to use Visual Composer for now. And the last but definitely not least plugin here is Yoast SEO. It's probably been, uh, in my opinion, in the top five must-have plugins uh, for the last five years, maybe even six. And if you aren't familiar with it, what it does is it gives you a report card on the SEO uh, best practices of every page or every post that you create within WordPress. It gives you a red, yellow, green light, depending on how it's assessing all of your your uh, Yoast SEO, or I should say all of your uh, SEO content on the website. It will check everything from the title tag to the, um, the permalink to the actual content within the editor. Uh, and all of that is surrounding the keyword that you put a focus on. So let's again say that you're trying to target um, a specific audience within a specific area for a specific service. Let's call it kombucha because that's what popped into my head just now. Uh, Buffalo, New York kombucha maybe is the keyword that you're looking to target for your kombucha brewing uh, business. Then you would type in, you know, kombucha Buffalo, New York, if that's your keyword. And then what Yoast SEO will do is reference that keyword, look at all of your page content and make sure that you're using that keyword in all of the proper pa uh, places with all of the proper amount of uh, keyword density, etc., and then give you a red, yellow, or ideally a green light indicating that your SEO is optimal. There's a lot more to it. There's a lot of videos out there that talk a lot more about it, um, but head and shoulders, uh, Yoast SEO is, is uh, above all of the competition uh, within that realm. They have a great team supporting it um, and a great resource of you know information, knowledge-based articles, blog posts, all of those types of things that can get you up and running. So without further ado, those are the plugins as of 2017 that I would recommend that you have installed on your modern WordPress website. Thanks so much.